What's up, everybody? James Duggan here with Chris Wilson of Grind Gear Games, and we are checking out Path of Exile, specifically the new expansion patch. What do you want to call it? Uh, Atlas of Worlds. Wonderful. So explain the map system, because this whole Atlas of Worlds kind of hinges around the map system and what that can do. So in Path of Exile, the map system is the end game, and you essentially find maps like this item here, which you can put on this map device in order to open portals that allow you to explore the map. And using our crafting system in the game, you can add mods to these maps. So for example, if I use this item on the High Gardens map, it adds a variety of mods, and I can re-roll these and randomize it, find ones that are good for my player, maybe even trade that to other players and then play that map. Right, and these have uh, exponentially increasing rewards. Um, they're also randomized, and we can see all the affixes that are, are going to take place. Yes, uh, that's correct. Wonderful. So in Atlas of Worlds, we've completely revamped and reimagined the endgame map system. And this involves adding a whole ton of maps, but also adding the Atlas of Worlds itself, which is this user interface here that shows you your progress through the mapping system. So each one of the maps you complete is an extra pip on here, and you get to find maps that are adjacent to these ones um, as you explore the Atlas. Sure, and are there uh, kind of exponentially increasing challenges as you get closer towards the center, or is there some kind of progression through this larger map of, of randomized instances? Well, I'll show you the the, uh, f the full map. This is a copy of the uh, you know un oh, un unhidden one. <laughs> so there's 100 maps on here, and that's because we've increased the map base by over 50% uh, from, from just under 70 to over 100, and also uh, revamped a lot of the old maps. And the way this basically works in a nutshell is you continue to find random maps just like you always did, but the ones that you find are ones that you've either completed before or ones that are adjacent to the one that you're playing in. So you can start in the four different corners, uh, the top left, the bottom left, and so on, and as you play through, you're going to find maps that you've previously completed, so you can kind of uh, increase your map base of maps that are available to you to find, as well as progressing towards the center where there are these four final boss fights that lead on to a fifth complete final boss fight. Ooh, very exciting. So what, uh, what are the rewards looking like for this? Because this looks like quite the undertaking, which I'm sure your player base is more than willing to uh, go through. Yes, I'm sure they are. So in terms of rewards, these four final boss fights have their own unique items that you can find there, and the fifth one, that which we're not showing today, has a bunch <laughs> of interesting stuff you can find. But we've also gone and added uh, specific base items to various points in the Atlas. So for example, this helmet here, uh, a bone helmet, is a new base type in the game, and this one is specialized around minions. Now normally we don't have base types that are for specific builds, but here's an example of a new one and we've put this in the, the atlas uh, I'll just uh, show you on the large picture this one is in the cemetery area which you can see towards the top here the various maps around there will be, uh, allow you to find that type of item and we sprinkled a whole bunch of new base types throughout the atlas and this means that players are encouraged to play in various areas that interest them maybe the items are appropriate for their build maybe the bosses are ones they're equipped to handle maybe the uh, maps there are ones they like the layout of and that means there's not necessarily the same pressure there is to push forward to just fight the final boss and there's a few uh, mechanics I'd like to talk about that allow you to actually change the atlas and upgrade it in various ways to make those maps even better for you. Sure, yeah. Can we do that while we check out one of the uh, the new tile sets? Sure. So I'll show you a couple of new maps to start with. Uh, the first one I'd like to show you is the Oasis map. And this is in the uh, desert area of the atlas. And similar-ish areas are associated, so you can kind of progress through a variety of different tile sets. And once again, this tile set is getting you closer to that kind of end goal of the four bosses plus the secret fifth boss, but also it may just be a, an area of interest depending upon your build and archetype. Certainly. So this is a this is a new desert uh, in the game, and we have quite a lush environment going on here. So while I'm fighting the monsters, you'll see I get to encounter tropical trees and grass, and there's an oasis itself in this map. Now, like all of the new all of the new maps we've added, um, there are lots of interesting new boss fights. There's a total of 30 new maps and 19 new boss fights that we've added in this expansion. So I'll show you another one for Variety, which also has a cool boss fight I'd like to show off. So uh, this one here is the Val City map. Now, this is an interesting one because it's a fusion of indoor and outdoor level generation. Historically, Path of Exile just had indoor areas or versus outdoor areas. But here, in addition to a um, an outdoor place with lots of cliffs and ravines and so on, we have a ruined city which you're able to play in and fight the monsters there. So here's something that's generated with indoor level generation rules, but in an outdoor tile set. Wonderful. Cool. So in order to show you the uh, the boss fight of this, I'll just use a cheat to skip ahead to the boss, you know, to save some time playing through the map. These cheats do not work on the live realm, thankfully. <laughs> so uh, here we're fighting Lady Stormflay. Now, she's a lightning-themed boss, and her gimmick, basically, is that as I do damage to her, or she does damage to me in this case, <laughs> um, she can create a lot of ground lightning, which is very, very difficult for me to... very, very dif dangerous for me to um, stand in. So 
You'll notice in a few seconds as I get her down further, the ground lightning starts to occur. And this crawls across the ground and is very dangerous. It does damage to me and shocks. And so I have to be very careful during this fight, especially because I have this uh, vulnerability curse on me that I kill her without standing in the ground lightning. So a lot of telegraphs, a lot of areas that you don't want to stand in. What's yes. always interesting, and there we go. This is, uh, yep. whenever you come off to show new content, which is always upper echelon content, very challenging content, you have yet to live through an entire demo. But I think that's indicative of the challenge that the players can expect, which yes. is very fun. It's certainly very dangerous, and a map like that is not a low-level content of this game. You know, it takes a while to play through and hit the end game here. And so the, the third map I wanted to show you was this one here, the Estuary. Now this is my personal favorite, and I like it because it combines the concepts of fire and ice in one map. So we have, in certain areas of the game, we have a, a shore like this, where you can run along and um, you can run along and you know see a bunch of water. And we also separately have areas where there are lava. And in this map, there is an ocean of both lava and an ocean of water close together. And this uh, pervades the whole theming of the map, you know, choices of signature monsters and so on. But it also means that the boss fight that we've added has an interesting mechanic where it mixes uh, fire and ice together. So I'll show you that one really quickly. Very cool. Uh, okay, so we warp across to the boss now. <coughs> As you warp, uh, we were talking about you know, the fact that this is endgame content, and I think what is indicative of a good action RPG is not just statistical difficulty in the bosses getting, you know, having a, a higher health pool, dealing more damage, but also this mechanical depth uh, that we see. These telegraphs kind of have needing to have a mastery of your mobility skills as well as your defensive cooldowns. I think that's all very fun. Yes, that's very true. And this character here, it really helps to be prepared because you're taking a barrage of both fire and cold spells. But what happens halfway through the fight, once you've done enough damage to him, is that he actually splits out into two separate golems, a fire golem and an ice golem, and you have to deal with them together. Oh, and so twin rover action. Yeah, quite a lot of the fight takes place where you're having to deal with both of these monsters. So there they are, and they're about to start applying some pressure to me in a second, and there it goes. And so you have to be very careful as you're fighting these. And I like this map because it helps um, exemplify the theme of this one. You know, there's mm -hmm. an ocean of fire, there's an ocean of cold, and we've got that in the boss fight. And we've tried very hard to hit that quality level with the rest of the new content in this expansion. Wonderful. Uh, so in addition to all of that, there are uh, new exotic I items, or exotic new items, yes. uh, that you've introduced. So whenever there's a challenge, there is a reward that is hopefully um, worthy of the challenge. Certainly. So can we talk a little bit about sure, that? Sure, I'll show you some of the interesting stuff you can find. I'm just going to switch character to sure. the Scion I've prepared for this. So an example of two items that you can find here are these, the Cartographer's Sextant and the Shaper's Orb. And the way this works is the Atlas itself um, has maps on it, as you know. Now. If you've played, say, the Dry Peninsula map here, and you enjoyed it, but it's just too low level for you, you know, it's a, it's maybe a, a, you know, tier three map, and you're, you know, fighting tier eight and nine maps, and it's just not challenging enough. It doesn't drop enough items. It's not high enough sure. level. You have the ability now to upgrade it. So you can use the Shaper's Orb, which you get for as a reward for completing maps. And I can upgrade the Dry Peninsula map, and this now makes it five levels higher. I mean, the user interface here is a bit of a work in progress. By release, we'll have this making it much clearer. <laughs> but the Dry Peninsula map has now been upgraded to a higher tier, and that means that I can specialize in finding maps that I want to uh, be very high level. Like, I can take the gorge map that's really popular and make it a very high level gorge by adding five levels to it. This also means that if exclusive items are dropping in that map, then are higher level versions of those items. Great. In a similar way, I can use the Cartographer's Sextant to modify the Atlas by adding properties to maps. So, for example, I've added um, a property to the Strand map, which says that whenever I run it, or any other maps within that radius, it gets an additional random map mod. And I'll apply another one to this one here. So this says that the Dunes map and ones near it, the boss drops an additional unique item. Now, this is a great one to roll in the demo, because it's very rare and very um, evocative <laughs> for players. But it means that if I were to run, uh, say, this Strand map here, or maybe this unique map here, or this Dunes map, that I would receive those benefits up to five times. And the Venn diagram in there, yeah, you yes. were saying the effects are, are multiplicative there. Absolutely. Or, great. So if there's a map that you really want to do, and you pile on these mods all around it in a big circle, then you get all of those effects on the map as you play it. And that means you can really ramp up the risk and reward of what you're getting. And there's a lot of interesting new stuff for you to find while you're doing this. Great. That sounds like a very granular um, progression, which is always good, as opposed to just, this is really hard all of a sudden. I think that's really cool Certainly. that players can kind of tailor their challenge. Yeah, and it helps a lot on your way to the final boss fights, of which we have one that we can show you today. Um, it helps to have things and reasons to play these maps and specialize them on the way, because we don't just want players to rush forward to the highest level content. We want to take the other content in the game, raise it up to be incredibly difficult, uh, content of their choice, that is, and then specialize in doing that. And it means that if you pick a part of the atlas that you like, make it your own, be the guy with the best gorge map on the server, people are going to be coming to play it with you so they can take advantage of the mods that you've earned. 
So this endgame system, the maps, uh, now has a lar an enormity of content that's been added to it, both uh, in terms of maps, in terms of bosses, and in terms of items. Uh, but talk a little bit about your kind of recurring um, seasonal leagues, which are kind of the idea of re-rolling and starting new in the context of other players doing the same thing with a unique rule set. So this time it's the Essence League. That's correct. So we run new challenge leagues every three months in Path of Exile. They're an economic fresh start. They're optional. You don't have to play in them. Many people choose to play their old characters. But if you start off in the Essence League, it gives you the ability to be on an equal footing with all the other players. Maybe you're new to Path of Exile. Maybe you're returning and you want to show just how good you are. So it's a good opportunity to play in a new league for three months. Now I can show you a character uh, briefly in the Essence Please? League here which uh, will show how it works. Now, I have to stress, the game is fully random, right? I might not run into the content I'm looking for on this character, <laughs> and it, it's, really, it's really interesting in demos to, uh, you know, to completely fail to show off the new content sometimes. But <laughs> essentially, the way the Essence League works is as you play through the game, you encounter groups of monsters that have been trapped by an ancient force. I'm just going to use a cheat to warp to a group of them that's hopefully in this level. So here's a good example. So I'll just kill some of the uh, other monsters that are around them. Now you notice that group of monsters there are trapped by crystals of what looks like ice. Mm -hmm. And these are monsters that are imprisoned by this essence. And so here in, in, ca in this lucky case, there are two essences, Whispering Essence of Greed and Wailing Essence of Torment. Now there are 25 different flavors of essence in the game where Greed and Torment are two examples. So upon finding these monsters, I can bust them out. So I click on it and I gradually free it from the ice and then I get a fight where I have to fight the monsters. Now you can see all these effects going off. And that's because there's, a <clears throat> there's several different essences that are affecting the fight. And each of the 25 flavors causes different types of things to occur. There are also seven different power levels of essences. And so this means that as you play through, you can find better and better versions of the various ones that you've seen. So I'll quickly try to take down this boss before he takes me down. So these, I mean, th that looks like a very interesting mechanic. Do you ever transition some of the mechanics over to the live servers once the the league is finished? Certainly, yeah. It's, it's something we've been doing um, occasionally when, when, we, when we feel a mechanic is appropriate for the core game. For example, the last league, the Prophecy one, is being moved into the core game. So once you've killed a monster like this, you get the ability to pick up its essences, in this case the two that were on the monster. Now you'll notice these have a lot of words on them. And the reason why <laughs> is because these are actually crafting items. So you can take these essences and you can make things with them. And I'll give you an example here. Here's a series of the Woe Essences. And these add spell damage, energy shield, and relatively, you know, normal other mods. And as you progress through the levels, and I'm hovering over these slowly so people can take screenshots, um, <laughs> you get a whole variety of different uh, escalating effects. and they essentially let you craft items. And the way this works is it's like an orb of alchemy in that it upgrades an item, but it will guarantee a specific mod. So for example, the deafening essence of greed lets me guarantee that when I roll this helmet, I'm going to get a life mod. Now those are the magic words the community is looking for, guaranteed life on armors. Now mm -hmm. the rest of the mods are random, they're probably junk. You have, to, you have to roll a lot of rare items to get good ones, but you're seeing a lot of these essences. You're getting on average one per area, sometimes two, and that means that when you play through the game, you get hundreds of chances of item crafting with guaranteed mods. Um, to demonstrate this one here, I can re-roll the helmet and it guaranteed the maximum life. Re-rolling again, different mods guaranteed maximum life. To give another example, this horror essence is really hard to obtain. In fact, it can only be obtained by a process of corrupting other essences. And that involves finding the monsters trapped in the crystals and applying one of these remnants of corruption. And then you have several outcomes you can get. You can kind of gamble your essences away on the fight. So by corrupting this um, amulet here, I'm able to guarantee 15% increased effect of Fortify on you, which is a completely new effect that wasn't seen previously. There was no way on an amulet to make your Fortify better, but in the Essence League you're able to. So what we're seeing is challenging fights throughout the game, combined with a complicated crafting system of being able to guarantee specific mods that help your build. And the one final note to mention is that you're able to upgrade essences by finding three of a certain type. So if I get my three Whispering Essences of Woe, I can trade them into a vendor to get one Muttering Essence of Woe and continue up the chain. And this means that it's possible, especially using the higher level essences you find in the endgame, to craft your way up to tier 7 essences like this that offer values that are significantly higher than what people have seen elsewhere in the game. So this is deepening the crafting system, which is in turn deepening the progression, allowing you to customize your character to obscene amounts. Yep. Uh, I ask you to do this every time you come and show off the game, yes. but can you open the, the skill star map, as I like to call it? Absolutely. Um, just to kind of show, this was in the vanilla launch of the game, which you have since refined, but I mean, this system, daunting at first may it be, uh, you can really tailor your character and the rest of the game in terms of its progression and everything else is echoing that sentiment uh, of allowing you to really create the character that you want to create and choosing a starting class it doesn't just you know it doesn't give you a specific set of abilities it puts you 
somewhere on a starting zone on this whole map. Yes. Which I think is very interesting. So, yep. that's Path of Exile, that's Atlas of Worlds, and when can we expect to see that? So you can play it on September 2nd, we're releasing it then alongside the Essence Challenge League, and we're looking forward to playing alongside you. Wonderful. For all things Path of Exile, keep it right here on IGN. Thank <laughs> you.